In this video, I'll be going over how to deal with multiple tiling textures on a single image. So a question I've uh, been asked several times is, how would I use something like this? This, for example, I have four tiling textures on here. And have it so that I don't have to cut up my model or be able to tile these images all over the place. Because, as we know, if we were to tile this right now inside Maya, it would tile the whole image. But what if I wanted to only tile a little section of it? All right. So this video will be going over that. Let's start with the plane. It can be any object you want, but you'll see the effect. I want to make this you know, just the one by one. I want to open the hypershade, and I want to apply a Lambert to it, this. So let's show the problem we have first. Go to Color, File. I'm going to load up the texture map. Press the number 6. And we see the actual texture here. Alright. So we have our little network over here on the side. I'm going to close this. I'm going to double click my Place 2D Texture. And typically the way I tile is by repeating my UVs. But if I were to do, let's say, 5x5, five five, we can obviously see the problem we have the rest of this showing. So first off, I'd like to go over how do we even get just one of these corners to show. There are two different ways, one by using coverage and the other is using repeat UV. For coverage, for example, I can double the amount of coverage it takes and translate my frame or offset it so that I uh, essentially only see part of my texture. So for example, if I do 2x2, two two, I might offset this by 0.5, or another 0.5 here, and you can just have one being shown. The other way is where you're repeating the UV. If I do 0 0.5, 0 0.5, it also does that same effect. Now, I just, I'll just do this one like this one. Alright, the other thing we have to do is make sure we don't wrap UV. So I turn this off. Look, the quality is significantly lower. You can always turn on high quality render and you'll get the nicer looking uh, textures inside the viewport. What this allows me to do is if I were to repeat my UV, let's say if I do end up tiling, um, or more like if I were to scale this by going to my UV texture editor right here. Off. I'm going to scale my UV inside. We go past a certain point. This is just a viewport bug. This actually isn't working properly. Uh, do not mind this. It only uh, renders in hardware and not software. So for example, this is actually what's going on. Just a hardware bug that happens inside the viewport. It'll toggle itself back off. But what we want to do is be able to have this actually work in software render and place it all around. Um, so the method I discovered is um, by using the layer texture. It is a long roundabout way, but it definitely works. The other method is by dicing your actual topology up. So for example, this one right here. If I had wanted to tile it more, I might have done this effect, like so. And I'll just do um, a planar mapping on top of everything. Actually, I don't even have to do that. I can just do create UVs, automatic mapping. And I would have mapped everything properly. Or, edit UVs, unitize. What unitize does is, if I go into my UV texture editor, it automatically fills up this whole space. If I use this method, the unitize method, then I don't even have to go in here and re change my repeat UV to 0.5. I can still leave this at 1 the default offset, and simply just take my UVs in here, scale it down, and move it. The problem I have with this technique is to try to scale it down moving it is that it's not as accurate. At least I know when I unitize, it fills up the whole space perfectly. So you probably made your tiling texture so it fits the space exactly. So why not just go inside your UV? Here, place a uh, 2D texture node and just undo that and, it, and call it a day. 
problem with this, what people have, is increase the polygon count. What if you don't want to increase the polygon count? Well, it's a lot longer, much uh, more roundabout way. Unitize that. And that is by creating that layer texture I was talking about. So I'm going to disconnect my connection right here. Go to my shader now and go to color. And scroll all the way down to layer texture. I'll get rid of this. I don't need that anymore. Uh, it seems like I'm using pretty more. And I'm just going to middle mouse drag and drop my file inside. Let's get rid of this. What this allows me to do now is I can technically uh, change the size of how much this covers everything, or essentially move it all around all I want. So, for example, I want this to take 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Let's see how little the amount of space is actually taken up. I, if I go to high quality render, I actually see how it's placed. So I have this placed right there. If I want another one, I'll just select these two, duplicate that, and have another one all over here. Middle mouse drag and drop, default. And instead of having it exactly right there, I might want to have this on this side now. So if I do the coverage at 0.5.5, I can translate my frame over to the side. And inside my layer texture, I can middle mouse drag and drop this right inside there. The current problem we have is it's not showing both of them. All you need to do is if the texture that's on top, um, change this to illuminate, and both sides show. We can do, keep doing the same thing. Let's do control D and have another one. Default. What's nice is what if I wanted to change this up and have not just this one tile right here, but I wanted a different texture on top of the tile. I can then go back in here and in my 2D texture node, instead of putting a 0.5 right here, I'm going to have another 0.5 on this side to make sure it's in the upper right hand corner. Let's attach this right inside. And so this also, to illuminate, that part shows up. But if I want to change my texture, it's going to replace 2D node now, and change this to whichever one I want. Uh, I find this to be very useful, and you only say it, you only have one polygon on top. I can tile this on top of that too. So I can duplicate that. And drag and drop. And the same thing, illuminate. Of course, I can move this. There's this 2D texture node right now. has everything placed on a 0.5.5 over here. Get rid of that one. Actually, I need this one here. I need this one to be gone. And there we go. Two tiling textures going across a single face and manually placing wherever you want. And you're using the one same texture and just multiple nodes. Um, in Max, it's actually easier because you have the ability to use crop and place and tile it however long you want. But for Maya, this is a, a method I had found out would be very useful. I've also prepared another texture, just because uh, I like always using a smiley face and just about everything I use. I create another texture over here, and I can keep my color to be pure black, or whatever color I want it to be. The alpha, I'm going to go to File. Load up a texture. And I have a, a smiley t uh, target right here. See, it makes a little smiley face. It's great. I like having smiley faces in everything I do. If I go in here, I can move this straight to the front using the middle mouse. And right now, it's not reading right, so I have to go in here, go to color balance, just turn on alpha's luminance. Let's plug in the right location. I also need to change my blend mode, and my, now mine's over. See how this will sit right on top of everything? Just imagine the crazy amount of te type of textures you can actually get. I can even change the size of the smiley face, so instead of it being, you know, a 1 by 1, I can make it a 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. And now I have this little problem where it's all kind of gray on the side. That's all because of this gray background here. Just change your default color to pure black. And now you can move this image wherever you want. So I can move this back in the middle if I want to. Or any corner I want. So 0 0.25, 0 0.25. This smack dab in the center again. 
and this allows you to reuse your laundry or textures and place any detail you want, and it's on a single face.